Hello and welcome to today's session of Academic Crisis Line. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, how to review a manuscript for a journal. Um, as usual, you can ask questions by tweeting me to at phdial. Um, and you can also find more information about me, the series, on my website, storiesandabrain.com. And other than in other sessions uh, from the Academic Crisis Line from the last weeks, um, this time I already wrote the blog post up front and also put some extra material there. And um, you can find this in the information regarding this video if you just collapse the uh, additional information. And there I also put a template for how to write a review report and which questions to address and what the structure of this should be. So this can be helpful. Um, also, the series today is um, part of a mini series. Um, so in two weeks on March 20th, uh, I'm going to talk about how to write a letter to the editor and give some materials about this. So um, yeah, um, this sort of belongs together. But uh, if you find this interesting as well, um, please um, also mark in your calendar to tune in in two weeks. So um, yeah, the first the first most important decision uh, when you uh, when you are thinking about reviewing an article for a journal is um, what articles to accept and which not. So, um, especially early in your career, I recommend you to review as much as you can um, because you can actually learn a lot from it. Um, you will uh, learn a lot for your own writing. It also helps you a lot to identify common mistakes and problems. Um, it will also give you a more realistic idea about how other people write because you get to see some unpolished versions of academic work, which is which can be very, very helpful. Um, yeah, and um, you also get some insights behind this whole publishing business by um, coordinating with your editor. The editor is your best spot in reviewing articles um, because um, if you have questions or any, any concerns or anything, you can always address this to the editor and ask them questions and they're there to coordinate for you, uh, with you. Um, important points to consider um, if you are accepting a review request or not is um, First, do you have the relevant expertise to evaluate this manuscript? Typically, when you get a request, you see at least the abstract and the title of the article, um, so you know like what roughly the topic will be and uh, the methods being used. If you have no clue whatsoever about the methods, but you feel very confident about the topic and that you can actually evaluate um, the contents and the research question pretty okay, um, then you can still um, you can still review this article and evaluate this scientific work, but communicate to the editor um, that you only have partial expertise so that another reviewer can um, provide um, insights into the methodological part, for example. Um, the other thing to consider is can you be objective? Often, as a reviewer, you know who the authors are, and if you have any issues with one of the authors, um, like be this positive or negative, um, if you feel like you might be biased or you can't actually objectively evaluate um, this article, um, then just don't do it. It's fine to decline a request and just say to the editor that you are somehow biased or that uh, there's uh, some problem going on. This is often called a conflict of interest. And another thing to consider is do you have the time? I mean, obviously, we never have time when we're always super busy, but can you make the time and can you actually make the deadline? Um, the deadline is often between a few days to three or four weeks uh, to submit your review report. And um, if you're crazy busy and there is no way you can manage this, also just don't accept or tell the editor that the deadline is too tight for you and that you can't make it. And then they can consider, um, depending on how desperate they are, either to extend the deadline or look for another reviewer. And if you decline a review request, then it's always very helpful to the editor if you suggest other people who can potentially review this. So I strongly recommend you doing this. Um, yeah. So um, let's see if I forgot something. Oh, yeah. Also, the goal of the review is not making a decision whether an article um, is going to be published or not, but actually to help the editor to assess the scientific work and see whether this is publishable or not and whether it's appropriate for the journal. Um, and the other thing which is uh, 
a very important goal of the review process as well, if you're already taking the time to evaluate this, also to give constructive feedback to the writers and the authors of uh, the respective article, because we all really have to rely on this. Um, before we go to um, the actual contents of the review report and how to start such a review process, um, I want to say a few words about confidentiality. Um, it's very important that from the moment on you are um, you are request you, you receive the review request. So often already by reading the abstract, you are um, requested to keep this absolutely confidential and don't share any part about um, this review request this paper or who submitted an article about a certain topic with anybody but the editor. The editor is the only person you can communicate with this about. And if you have the feeling you have to talk about this with your supervisor or you need some additional advice from an outsider's perspective, then you have to communicate this to the editor first and you have to ask for permission to share materials with other people or to do the review together with somebody else. This is really important. So now we come to good and bad reviews. So a good review is a constructive, very helpful feedback and a, a general critical assessment of a scientific work, which identifies both weaknesses as well as strengths of an article. And um, even if you would have done this entire work completely different, this is not the point here. Is the work then valid and uh, up to date uh, with scientific work and uh, scientific methods? And uh, is this it, are the conclusions um, validated by um, the data or the findings? Um, then you have to stand this, even if you disagree of how people did something. If this is fine and if it's a scientific con consensus that it's okay to do so, um, then it's fine. So a bad review, on the other hand, is full of personal biases, often very nasty and unhelpful and uncon unconstructive and doesn't really offer concrete solutions or suggestions on how to improve the work. Um, also, um, in bad reviews, you often already read the personal biases of a reviewer and it's very self-focused and arrogant. So um, try not to be a bad reviewer because you are relying on the system as much as anybody else. So where to start? And um, like, especially if you're doing this for the first time, you get uh, you get a request. You feel confident about accepting this review request. You say to the editor, "Yes, I will do this. I only have three weeks to do this, but somehow I will manage." So, where do you start in the first place? People have very different strategies. I just tell you mine. I always only read the abstract in the first go, and. Um, I only focus on the abstract and the title, and then I try to write down for myself um, the research question, the main finding, and the conclusions, and potentially the method being used, like general fMRI or a behavioral experiment, longitudinal study, or meta-analysis. And um, this is already really helpful in like guiding my general impression or what to expect from the article. So. Um, once I once I, I I wrote down this research question and the main main outcome, um, I do a super fast skim read of the article. I don't focus on details. I don't uh, look at very critical at it. I just generally want to have a very general impression of uh, what the article is about and what the general framing is. And then after each section, let's say the introduction, the methods, the results, and the discussion, I write a one to five se uh, sentence summary of this section, um, which I will also use in a review report later. But um, this is just to get a general overview of what the paper is about and what the main focus is, and if this is congruent with what the abstract promised me. <laughs> so this is already, like, if there, there is discrepancy between these two things, then this is already the first thing to address. And often papers are reframed later, but people just recycle the uh, headline or the abstract. And uh, then there is this weird logical gap between the abstract and the paper. You will find this out relatively fast. So um, this already helps you like setting things straight and see whether you focus on what is in the abstract or what is in the paper and what it's actually about. And this is an important thing to address. So. Um, after this skim, skim read, I take my first notes, and this is um, next to this mini summary. It's uh, are the methods appropriate to address this research question? Um, 
<coughs> are the conclusions consistent with the outcome, just on a, on a, on a, on a really fast read, and uh, whether there are major flaws. And I'm taking notes on this. And this is basically already the basis of my first part of the review report. And often I then also pencil down a decision. Um, just on pencil, because often or most of the time this changes, but this is my first impression of the article. And then I put it away for at least a day, sometimes a week, depending on how much time I have for the article. But um, I just let it settle and like see what after I digested it, like what is left. And um, yeah, many people do this in one day and then just after the first skim read go on to a more focused read. I just don't do this because I am um, usually after the first skim read very biased on what I want to focus on. And uh, so a lot of details will slip through. Um, yeah. And before I then go after a day or two uh, to the second more closer read, I just scan my notes and just get a general idea of what uh, passed me, uh, what kind of impression passed me had of this article. And I use this to um, start out on doing my close up read. And um, then um, after the close up read, I make concrete notes on where, where I see problems or where there are troubles with uh, the language or something or where something's unclear. And I, um, after the, the first close read, I try to summarize um, the main points I want to make about criticism or also what I like about the article. And now we come to the review report because after the second close read, um, I'm actually, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm writing the report. And the report um, is a bit of a sensitive thing because it's a lot about structure and it's a lot of questions to keep in mind. Um, so, um, yeah. Uh, so first, the first part of the report, um, oh, by the way, if you want, uh, you can open the template uh, down here um, to just follow this. Um, because I will actually just stick to the template I'm using for myself all the time. So the first part of the template or the first part of a review report typically is a summary of the research. Remember, I wrote down a mini summary of uh, the single parts of the study. This is where I'm using them from. And also like what the main finding is and the main interpretation and conclusions. So this goes in the first paragraph of my review report, something like this study is an empirical um, approach to research question A. Um, the offers um, used method A, B, C, or D um, in order to assess, uh, uh, assess the phenomenon of C <laughs> and measured, uh, measure A and B. In order to uh, interpret, they found that uh, measure B is higher in, condition, in this condition than in the other, and um, they interpret this as evidence for, and then usually a theory. And then there comes the general assessment, which says something like, um, this is a well thought through study, or it's a well written manuscript, and logic, or um, something like, yeah, there are some problems with the method or the generalizability. So your general impression goes there. Um, try to be positive there and uh, try to be to keep the big picture in mind for your first general ass assessment and don't focus on annoying little details because they're not very helpful there so this is the first part the editor gets the structure questions you should address and uh, the summary in the general assessment is is the article interesting and relevant for the field of research um, is it appropriate for the audience and is it written in an appropriate way for the audience and the journal um, does it address an important research question? Um, is the article format and the article style appropriate for the format submitted or for the uh, journal submitted? This can be very different. Um, are the methods appropriate? Are the conclusions justified? And are you convinced? And also explain why you are convinced or why you're not. The second part of uh, the research, uh, the, the review report will be the points of critique. These are typically um, separated into major uh, and minor. Um, major being like flaws in the design or suggesting additional literature to review, uh, potentially doing an additional control experiment or um, doing an additional control analysis um, or reframing something or doing a very thorough editing. Um, minor points, on the other hand, are more like, oh, please be clear on the terminology here, or um, I don't really understand the logic here, 
uh, can you give more details about this one measure? And um, the end of the research report is your your recommendation for the editor. And depending on the journal, this is either something you only write to the editor or this is something public. Um, keep in mind, even if this is confidential between you and the editor, mistakes happen. And I already had um, recommendations to the editor accidentally copy pasted into the response to me as an author. So yeah. Even though this is anonymous and typically should only stay between you and the editor, the editor still knows who you are. So don't be nasty uh, and stay professional and never write something where you wouldn't also put your name underneath in public. I think this is a good rule of thumb. So <laughs> in terms of the content, what you should address in your review report, and especially the major minor points is um, things like um, whether the writing uh, how the writing is, whether it's concise and clear, um, whether the English is comprehensible and uh, and easy to read and to follow, um, whether they use consistent terminology and explain all specific terms, uh, whether the use of jargon is appropriate for the journal and the, and the level of the audience. Um, also, uh, always good to, uh, good to address is whether the abstract is uh, a good representation of the work and whether um, you think that uh, the heading is appropriate. Yeah. Another important thing to address in uh, the major and minor points are um, figures and structures, uh, figures and tables. Like figures should represent the results in an appropriate way. It should not be like cherry picking or over polishing results, but be um, realistic and nice. Um, and um, but it's also regarding the legends and uh, the figure descriptions in the tables. Um, I generally think that all figures and tables in the manuscript um, should be um, presented in a way that even without reading the article, you can understand what is happening and that you can actually follow this, at least if you understand a little bit about the topic and the method. So, um, yeah, there often articles are a bit problematic, and this is a point where I often find a lot of improvement or ways to improve it. Um, Another point to address in uh, the uh, points of critique is whether the argumentation and the logic is clear, whether there are flaws or logical gaps in the argumentation, whether some information is missing, whether the reviewed literature is presented in an appropriate way, and whether you think there are gaps or like some parts of the literature missing, which should be included. Um, whether the research question is formulated clear and also justified uh, for the importance and what it adds to the scientific discourse. Um, the hypothesis should be clear and valid, and if not, you should also address this. Um, yes. Obviously, you should address whether the methods are good and complete and the statistical analysis is appropriate and up to standards. And regarding the discussion and conclusions, um, you should address in the major and minor points whether all um, issues and questions raised in the uh, introduction are also addressed in a discussion, even whether uh, they just say agnostic or um, have, uh, say that the article is not or the findings are not sufficient to address these questions, at least it should be addressed that um, this issue they talked about in the introduction um, what they can say about it in the discussion or from the results. Obviously, um, a discussion and conclusion should contain limitations. Um, there's often, there, there you often have more ideas and more specific ideas than the authors of the paper. So also address this. And most importantly, um, regarding the points uh, on the discussion, what you're writing to the editor is whether the conclusion and interpretation is validated by the um, data and the findings. And lastly, uh, the appropriateness of format uh, is also a point you should address. Many journals offer different types of formats, like whether it's a literature or, or a review or an opinion paper, uh, whether it's an empirical paper, or whether it's a brief report. And often, um, what do you feel about what an article should be rather than what the authors thought uh, can be different. So sometimes 
uh, if you have just a single finding and the article is very straightforward, then it's often better framed, framed as a brief report. So think about whether um, the format in which the article has been submitted is appropriate for, um, for presenting this scientific body of work or work. Um, some words about the tone, how to write this uh, criticism is always try to be as constructive, concrete, and fair as you can. Start always with the positive points. This makes people much more likely to also read your negative criticism and address it, and also sets the, the general start of the tone right and um, opens the discussion between uh, the authors and the reviewer. Also, don't do, critique the authors or address the authors directly, but critique the body of uh, the work they submitted and always um, focus on the scientific work rather than the skills or abilities of the people who produce it. Don't be too nitpicky about details. This is really something um, only if there are only nitpicky details we can focus about, but especially in the first round of review, um, be more focused on, about the big picture and um, try to summarize all the problems and um, ideas or points you want to raise in bigger chunks or like just group them together. If there's a general terminology problem, then just say, uh, please be clearer on the terminology of terms A, B, C, and D rather than saying something, regard, uh, than, than pointing out every individual uh, point where it's unclear what they mean with it. So same for writing. If um, you think the English is, uh, the English needs improvement or it, should, it needs a close round of editing for language, then just suggest that it needs a close editing round of language and uh, for language and uh, don't point out every individual detail. Same for the statistical analysis. If you don't like how to report, um, how, how they report the findings or the results, um, then just say uh, that you would like, like to see the results reported in, for, in the, this specific format, rather than addressing at each individual point in the manuscript uh, where you would like things to change or where you think things are uh, missing. So this saves you a lot of work, um, but it's also much more helpful for the authors and is less frustrating. Um, always try to offer a solution if you can. Um, sometimes you can't and the only solution which you can offer so sadly I don't think this works out but maybe in a future project you could try to solve this problem by doing this instead of that or um, introducing another condition or something like this um, yeah just try to offer a solution and in terms of tone also just write the report as if you would sign it with your name and it would be a document out in public with your name. And always proofread it under this premise that you might, that this might be public. And if you wouldn't put your name under it in public and like stand for it um, in front of other colleagues, then there is something wrong with the tone and how, how you give the feedback. Um, if you're already at it, I do not <laughs> recommend you to sign your review report until you are in a safe position in your career um, generally in an ideal world it would be nice to just stand up for you, uh, with the work and your criticism but this can work against you so just don't especially as a young researcher don't take the risk so we have a question here coming up so um Somebody is asking um, regarding um, the decision making, whether it's accept, uh, reject, or revise, um, and uh, whether there's something like accept and revise. I think um, there is something like this, and this is called uh, acceptance and minor revisions, or just minor revisions. And um, you hardly ever will receive an article which you will accept right away. Um, so. This is just because this whole review process contributes so much to improving scientific work. And often people bring different perspectives and different views, which will just make the work itself better. Um, this is the nice part about peer review. Um, so um, you hardly ever will get an article where you say, great, except right away without changing one word. I never came across something like this. And I also never heard from a colleague that this happened to them. So <laughs> there are always some minor changes to do. Um, and this is fine. 
Um, I think in general, if there's anything salvageable or anything uh, you think is interesting and worth publishing, um, either from the ideas or from the data, um, and you have an idea um, to address concerns or flaws, then always go for major revision. It's still up to the editor to decide yes or no, um, or whether this is doable or not. But as a reviewer, your job is not mainly to decide whether something should be published or not, but it's really just to see to say whether you think it's worth um, it's worth continuing to work on this or not. So um, yeah, I think. Um, it, I mean, it's obviously up to you, but don't be too critical. Also, just keep the level of the general in mind. Um, for nature or science, you might be more strict in the rejection or the editor already um, than um, you would be for a smaller, more detailed journal where the um, evaluation will just be very different. Most journals also have some kind of guidelines for reviewers, what to pay attention to and what to address. So, um, yeah. Most, mostly, unless I really think there's a major flaw or there's really something inherently wrong with the research question, um, I always recommend either major or minor revisions um, and try to address each point to make the work better. Um, and I hardly ever uh, say reject something right away, but then write to the editor. Um, so generally, like, I like the idea, but there's a major flaw. I don't know how, whether it's possible to address this. Um, if they find a way or or not, like if they find a way to address this, then uh, I would recommend major revision, but I'm afraid this is not possible or this is difficult and I leave it up to the authors whether they find a way to solve this problem. Um, or if I have a solution, I obviously offer the solution, but in either case, I would say like, if this is possible, major revisions, if not, then reject. So this is my take on this. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, but also just keep in mind, it's not really your responsibility to decide on reject or not. It's really just your recommendation to the editor and ultimately the editor makes a decision. And even if uh, five reviewers say, uh, revise ma uh, major revisions uh, and resubmit, um, the editor can still decide, oh no, this is too much work and I don't think it's worth it. So yeah, this is, uh, this is not your decision to make. Um, other things to consider in general, um, things I also always pay attention to, even though they are not necessarily in normal review guidelines, is um, the recency of the citations. Um, sometimes you uh, get um, work which has only citations from 10 years ago, then I always grow a bit suspicious. I mean, it might be that it was just a super interesting topic which nobody cared about for 10 years and now suddenly we found a solution to the problems from back then and we can address this again. But then I always do some more background research and check whether there isn't some more recent work addressing this. So yeah, sometimes people get a bit lazy with side projects and don't really keep up with the literature. So then you often can also find that a lot of this work has already been done or a lot of problems they're addressing are already solved. So who knows? So this is always something which um, which raises my suspicion. So I at least check. Another thing is um, I always think whether the journal for which I'm reviewing or the article format uh, for which this article has been submitted um, is the best outlet for this possible work. And often um, then I also um, suggest uh, Ch uh, changes or think about, well, maybe after some substantial shortening of this, this, and this aspect, um, this might fit better as a brief report. Or um, you can also suggest something like a graphical abstract instead of a written one or whatever. And often articles are just submitted to journals which are not necessarily the best outlet for this. So. This is a bit difficult to address to the editor and the authors, but it's something I at least think about when writing the review. But I think this is the best work. And yeah, sometimes sometimes it had been submitted at the other journal where I'm thinking about first and probably was rejected there, so that's why it's there now. But yeah, never know. Um, yeah. Um, it's also always important to check whether the English is OK and whether it's readable, especially if um, the writers or the authors are non-native speakers. Um, 
often <laughs> my British colleagues also run into trouble with this that the reviewers such as um, a close round of editing uh, by um, a native speaker. This is always a bit amusing, but on the other hand, it also just indicates that the use of English you have in your article is not necessarily appropriate for scientific discourse and for a lot of second language speakers to interpret and understand. So yeah, just maybe simplify constructions here and there and use some easier vocabulary. So yeah, it's not your job to do the edit of the work and like check for all uh, typos or um, grammatical errors. Um, but it's always good to the editor to comment on the writing stand, whether it's okay or not. Um, if I decide to recommend for um, resubmit and uh, revise, I always ask for um, I always ask for making all the materials public as far as possible if the authors haven't done so already uh, upon initial submission of the article. I just think this is good practice to do, and I try to enforce it by asking for it as a reviewer. So also, um, if it was already included in the initial submission, check whether all the links to uh, supplementary material and data sheets are working and whether everything is actually there. And um, yeah, I don't like things like all oh, materials available upon office request. Sometimes it's not otherwise possible because it's patient information and sensitive information. But if it's not possible to make all the materials available, um, at least I ask for justification for it. And I think this is a good thing to do. So. It's also fine to disagree with the interpretation or the framing of a question or to generally disagree with everything the author writes. But if they can support their points and their opinions um, with uh, scientific evidence or with, um, with citations and other findings, then you have to leave this opinion stand. You don't have to have agree, you don't have to agree with everybody. Um, but if somebody has a justified opinion, whether you agree with it or not, this is not your job to judge them, and you have to let it stand. Don't worry too much about the author. It's also like they might be this doctor famous, um, and you're very worried about <laughs> giving criticism to them, or um, yeah, or also uh, just addressing this very honestly, and then thinking about oh, this big person in the field who is so important and inspiring, uh, and then just a lot of your critical attitude already slips away. Just don't. Just don't focus on who the authors are, or what they're doing. Just focus on the scientific work. This is your job. And uh, if you can get critical and helpful feedback, it doesn't matter who this person is at the receiving end. So when Sometimes reviewers are also very unreasonable in what they request as changes or not, and what they want as uh, additional revisions. So I think it's very important to be reasonable there, um, because it's just impossible to to make a work perfect, and every work will have its limitations and flaws. And um, it's as a reviewer, it's also just very important to stay reasonable and um, keep in mind what the particular funding situation of the institute might be or from the authors. Um, like whether they have the means to double the sample size or make it bigger and whether you think the work is also somewhat valid or uh, has some contribution to the field, regardless of the limitations. So. You can request a lot of changes, but if it's not possible, and otherwise it will be a file drawer, uh, it, uh, it will be a file drawer subject. You just have to keep this in mind. Is it worth requesting all these things, taking the risk that the scientific work will never see the, the, the light of publication? So yeah, it's just sometimes we're a bit spoiled from this the institute we're in or like our funding situation. Keep in mind that. Not everybody else has the same situation that for some people it's much harder to do these things. Also in terms of skills or um, expertise. And um, yeah, I generally think uh, just try to be nice and constructive and uh, put yourselves in the, shoe of the shoes of the receiving end. And uh, yeah, it's also fine to have a very critical as assessment of your work but getting, getting helpful feedback, this is sometimes really important. But um, yeah, if it's not 
written in a way you would like to communicate with this person, then it's not very helpful. So in terms, when you are the reviewer, also just try to be a constructive peer who can give feedback and have an open discussion about these issues rather than being <laughs> reviewed to you. So um, yeah, we have another question. We have a question regarding um, credit systems for reviewing uh, where reviewers are paid or um, how they work. I unfortunately have absolutely no uh, experience with these credit systems for reviewers, so I can't tell you much about it. Um, I can ask around and post it in the comments uh, if I find out something, but um, yeah, I don't have the feeling this is something which is particularly popular in my field. So I don't know, but in terms of credits and like how much to review and what it would be worth reviewing, I think at least for each article you're submitting, you should review one. And if you submit the same article multiple times, you should also review multiple times because you just depend on, on, the, on the same system and it's very important to do. But yeah, like open systems uh, for these credits, I don't have much idea about. Let's see whether we have questions on Twitter. Doesn't look like it. So, um, yeah. Are there any more concrete questions right now? Um, if not, um, you. Uh, just keep in mind, in two weeks, I'm going to talk about a very related topic. I can also address some questions. So if you have more or longer questions uh, regarding this, you can also send me an email to fhartone at upen.edu. Um, so if you have longer questions or specific examples you might want to talk about, um, just send me an email. Um, if you have questions regarding how to write letters to editors or uh, upfront uh, issues with this, um, please already email me uh, like in the next days so I can prepare and include this in a session. And um, yeah, I have the feeling we're going to have a few more talk talks about um, publishing and uh, how this works. So um, yeah, just stay tuned about this. And uh, yeah, I think other than that, we are done with today's session. And um, yeah, please don't hesitate to write me any emails either about uh, letters to the editor or not. Um, also, take the chance to vote for future sessions. Um, there are there is a link for um, future topics in the description of the video. So just uh, um, just um, go there and vote for upcoming topics. The topics for the coming for the coming um, two sessions are already selected. So in two weeks, I'm going to talk about uh, writing the letter to the editor. And uh, on April third, which is in four weeks, then I'm going to have a very exciting session about uh, gender bias in academia with very, very esteemed and interesting guests. So please stay tuned. Until then, uh, see you soon and have a great week. Bye.